Welcome to Chemical Engineering World. Today we are going to discuss about most important interview questions asked from fluid flow operation for a chemical engineering. Especially from pump. Question 1. What is the difference between head and pressure? To start, head is not equivalent to pressure. Head is a term, which has units of a length or feet. In the Bernoulli's equation each of the terms is a head term, elevation head h, pressure head pg and velocity head v2 slash 2 grams. Head is equal to specific energy, of which the units are lbf foot therefore the elevation head is actually the specific potential energy, the pressure head, the specific pressure energy and the velocity head is the specific kinetic energy, specific means per unit weight. So what is the difference? Head is energy per unit mass whereas pressure is a force per unit area. Question 2, why is the term pressure drop used when describing the effect of equipment on a system? To drive fluid through a piece of equipment there must be a force at the inlet greater than the force at the outlet. These forces are converted to pressure, which is more convenient in a fluid system. The difference, or drop. In pressure between the inlet and outlet is proportional to the overall force pushing the liquid forwards. If we convert pressure drop to head then we obtain the pressure drop value in terms of head, that is fluid column height, or pressure head. Question 3 How can the same pump satisfy different flow requirements of a system? If a pump is sized for a greater flow and head that is required for the present conditions, then a manual valve at the outlet of the pump can be used to throttle the flow down to the present requirements. Therefore, at a future date the flow can be increased by simply opening a valve. This however is wasteful of energy and a variable speed drive should be considered. Question colon 4 What is the difference between the NPSH available and the NPSH required? The NPSH available can be calculated for a specific situation and depends on the barometric pressure, the friction loss between the system inlet and the pump suction flange, and other factors. The NPSH required is given by the pump manufacturer and depends on the head, flow and type of pump. The NPSH available must always be greater than the NPSH required for the pump to operate properly. Question colon 5 What is the purpose of a variable speed drive? All systems require a means of flow control. The plant's output requirements may change causing flow demand to vary and therefore the various systems throughout the process must be able to modify their output flow rate. To achieve this, pumps are sized for the maximum anticipated flow rate. 1. The most frequent means of reducing the output flow rate is to have a line which recirculates flow back to the suction tank. 2. Another method is to have a valve in the discharge line which reduces the output flow rate when throttled. Either method works well, but there is a penalty to be paid in consumption of extra power for running a system, which is oversized for the normal demand flow rate. A solution to this power waste is to use an electronic variable speed drive. For a new installation this alternative should be considered. Question colon 6 What is NPSH? The net positive suction head, NPSH, is the head at the suction flange of the pump less the vapor pressure converted to fluid column height of the fluid. The NPSH is always positive since it is expressed in terms of absolute fluid column height. The term net refers to the actual head at the pump suction flange and not the static head. The NPSH is independent of the fluid density as are all head terms. Question colon 7 What information is required to determine the total head of a pump? 1. Flow rate through the pump and everywhere throughout the system. Two physical parameters of the system, length and size of pipe, no, of fittings and type, elevation of inlet and outlet. 3. Equipment in the system, control valves, filters. 4. Fluid properties, temperature, viscosity and specific gravity. Question colon 8 What is the best efficiency point, BEP? The BEP, best efficiency point is the point of highest efficiency of the pump. 
all points to the right or left of BEP of a lower efficiency. The impeller is subject to non-symmetrical forces when operating to the right or left of the BEP. These forces manifest themselves as vibration depending on the speed and construction of the pump. The most stable area is near or at the BEP. Question colon 9 What is the best way to measure head and flow? 1. If there is a flow transmitter in the line then problem solved. 2. If you can measure the geometry of the discharge tank and you can get an operator to allow the tank to fill during a certain period of time, you will be able to calculate the flow. This is probably the best method. 3. I have tried ultrasonic devices which provide a non-invasive method of measuring flow. It does require particles in the fluid. I am told that air bubbles are sufficient. Anyway, I have tried it and found it to be highly unreliable. Question colon 10 How do you calculate pressure drop due to fluid friction? The Colebrook equation is the most accepted formula for calculating the pressure or head drop due to friction in pipes for Newtonian fluids. This equation relates the friction factor to the Reynolds number and the pipe roughness. The friction factor is then used in the Darcy formula to calculate head drop. For non-Newtonian fluids, which is mostly slurries of one kind or another, the process is much more complicated and many factors are taken into account. Some of these factors are, particle size and distribution, settling velocity of the particles in the mixture, viscosity variation of the mixture, solids transportation mode, etc. Question colon 11 What is an energy balance? Because of the principle of conservation of energy, any energy gain or loss in a system must be accounted for. Therefore, making an energy balance is the process of identifying all the sources of energy gain or loss and adding them up. The result must be equal to zero. Question colon 12 Energy conservation techniques in pumps. When actual operating conditions are widely different, head or flow variation by more than 25 to 30 percent, then design conditions, replacements by appropriately sized pumps must be considered. Replacement with high efficiency pumps. Operating multiple pumps in either series or parallel as per requirement. Reduction in number of pumps. By improving the piping design to reduce frictional head loss. By reducing number of bends and valves in the piping system. By avoiding throttling process to reduce the flow requirement. By trimming or replacing the impellers when capacity requirement is low. By using variable speed drives. By using energy efficient motors. Next video will be of preventive.